Okay, so last time, let me recap. Last time we did factoring. Do you guys remember what we did? The first thing first is what? Factor out GCF. That's the first thing you do. I give you something on the exam. The first thing you're looking for is GCF. Is there a GCF first? And then um, the next will be what? By grouping, right? When do I use grouping? It's special is you don't use grouping for every single problem. Well, you use GCF for every problem. If you don't have one, you just skip that step. If you have one, you should just factor it out. But for group factoring, what is special about it? How many terms should I need? Four or more, right? Um, because a lot of times you're gonna see only three, so you're not gonna use grouping by that. All right, so here's, um, did I, was it? I should have write it down. Okay, so let's do this one. Today I'm gonna to show you how to factor a trinomial, I mean trim in three terms with a coefficient one. This is the easy case. Trust me, that's the easy one. The one with the coefficient of one. Um, the one that's the coefficient is not one is the hardest one. All right, um, do you guys know how to factor this, right? Ignore the first. You guys know how to factor that one? Bye, bye. Grouping, right? So what I did was from from the from this part, I split the seven x into two numbers, four x plus three x, seven x, right? Um, and then I grouped them. Right? So here's seven x and then I group them. Um, someone tell me what? How should I group them? Yeah, but you last two usually is how it goes. Not always work, but usually like eighty percent of the problem is kind of like that, right? Um, now the question here is. How do you know how to split? Because seven, seven could be what? One plus six, two plus five, right? three plus four, uh, you know, zero plus seven. How do I know which one to, to split, which pair to choose? Um, that's what I'm gonna tell you next. <clears throat> no? All right, so let's do this. Um, in order to find those two numbers, 4x and 3x, I want to ask myself, find me two numbers. The product is 12. So find two numbers that, you know, such that, st means such that, in mathematics, as T means such that um, product equal 12 and sum equal seven. Where's this 12 and seven come from? Did you look at the problem? Mm -hmm. This is the product, right? That's 12 right there. And that's um, the sum, right? That's the sum. So you, you look at the problem, but the coefficient of x squared has to be one, right? As long as the coefficient is one, you ask yourself, what is the product? Is that I have the product more two numbers multiply by 12 and x is seven. Can you think of the two numbers? Well, product first, this product, either one times 12, which is not gonna add up to seven, however combination you do, right? Two and six, not it, right? The two, six, any combination is not gonna give you seven. Three, four, sounds good? Three, four, right? So, um, we always go with the product first. So three and four. Three comma four. And that's how you've you got the four x and seven x. So the two number once you found out the two numbers, you can split, you can split that second, but the middle term to three x plus four x or four x plus three x doesn't matter which way you do it. Same. All right, so let's start factor this one. Do you guys know how to do this? You can factor that and tell me what you got. Go ahead, do it yourself. It's old stuff. Anyone tell me the first step? Mm -hmm. For the first group, factor out x, what's left? x plus four. Second group, 
Mm -hmm. X plus four again, you should have X plus four, X plus four twice. That means you factor out again. Right. You factor those two out again. So um, equal X plus four times. So the first group, you factor out X plus four, the first group left over is just X. And the second group left over is plus three. At the end, at the end of your factoring, you should have a product. How does the coefficient of the middle term seven relate to the constant term in the factor? Well, what they meant by is um, if you relate it to the constant term in the factor, four, three, add it to seven, that's what they're asking. What's the relation? So you say it's um, four plus three is seven. So you say, I see the sum. This is like baby step. You're not supposed to show me every single thing on the exam. Um, later, I'm gonna show you two ways of factoring this by AC method and get some check. <clears throat> okay. So when you factor a form of trinomial, you should have something like this. X plus M times X plus N. Well, not always, plus, I, don't, I don't know how they do it. Um, it doesn't have to be X plus M, X plus N all the time. It could be X minus M, X minus N, right? Um, um, M, N could be a positive or negative number, okay? I, I don't like how they put it, but just it's not my note. They give it to me. Okay, all right, so let's do this. Um, <clears throat> factor of, of 48 are listed below. Use the list to answer part A to D. So I got one comma 48. 224, 316, 412, stick 8. Um, five two integers that multiply to 48 and add to 19. So let me write here product is what? Product is 48. And sum mean adding to 19. What are the two numbers? So two numbers multiply 48 and add to 19. Think product first. Don't, don't think about the sum, the sum later. So just two numbers, let's see, 48 is an even number. So I'm gonna start out with two. So two times something, two times what? You need a calculator, 48, two times 19? 48, two times 24, right? Now, 24 and two, I'm not gonna add up to 19. Any other reason? Uh, next, what is it? Hmm? Yeah, 316. Does it add up to 19? Yeah. 316. Sounds good. So you just kind of um, um, just keep finding them, right? So 3 and 16. And what do I do with those 3 and 16? Do you guys remember? What do I do next? What I use it for? I use it to split what? Which one? Split the middle part. Split the middle one. One with the X. So instead of 19X, I'm going to write it at. Let's see, x squared plus 3x now plus 16x plus 48. And then because you have four terms, group factoring. Per two, la two. Um, if someone do x squared plus 16x first, it's okay. You can all you can group the first two also. I don't think this matters. Well, no, maybe you want to group differently, but it doesn't matter. Okay, um, the first group, someone else, don't let one person do all the work. Someone factor the first group for me. Volunteer, anyone? If you speak, you remember things. 
Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. And then the second one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Very good. Very good. If you speak, it helps, right? Right or wrong, it helps. Um, you study less. Um, and then you factor out again. Someone else for the last step. Thank you. X plus three times X plus 16. All right. It, this is called AC method. I'm going to write it in a dark, dark green here. The method I'm using right now, you know, find the product and sum and then split the middle number and then group it is called AC method. Um, I'll tell you why it's AC. I'll, I'll, call, I'll tell you what AC is. Product is um, one times four, one times forty eight is forty eight, and the sum is nineteen. AC is because if I write it in a general form, it's A X squared plus B X plus forty eight. I'm sorry, plus C A X squared plus B X plus C. So the product is always A times C. In this case, A is one, so it's always just C. Uh, but in general, it's called the AC method. I'm going to show you one more problem using the AC method as well. And then the last two problems, I'm going to show you a guess and check method. I think you'll like it better, at least for this section. Okay. Uh, but AC method will be your best friend in general. Okay. All right. Um, the second one, I want you to find two integers that multiply to negative 48. So product is negative 48. And the sum will add to 13. I think in high school, they do some kind of thing like this. And then you put number here, number, is that what you do? I don't understand how it go, but, but I see people do it on the exam. I, was, I wasn't taught like that. But, but if it worked for you, then go ahead. You don't have to follow what I did. All right, someone tell me what are two number. Very good. Product is negative. So one of the numbers has to be positive, right? The other one is negative. So when you multiply them together, you still got negative. Now you want the sums to be positive. So the one, the one, the bigger one should be what? Positive. Very good. Right. Um, so uh, so uh, negative three and then 16 and then split. So x squared minus 3x now plus 16x minus 48. If you have it the other way around, like plus 3x minus 16x, you double check back and say, oh, I got negative 13x. So I'll switch the signs. Okay. <clears throat> All right, group factoring. The first one I'm going to fast, that's the one I'll do for me. I'm just going to pick on you because it's going to be on your final exam or, or just exam two is coming up, right? Um, someone else first, facts with the first group. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. And then keep going. Mm -hmm. 16 times parenthesis x minus three. Very good. Um, and the last step will be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It, it, does, it doesn't matter. X minus three, X plus 16 doesn't matter what order you do. It's the same. Do you have any question in this method? The, the thing here, I just had to memorize what to do on the exam, right? Too many problems altogether. Um, C, 2C, I'm going to show you how to. So let me write down still AC method. So that you have on your note. All right, see, um, I want to find two integers that multiply to negative 48 and add to negative 13. Yes, I'm going gonna, gonna to use different color because I'm using a different um, method. So product is negative 48. And the sum is negative 13. Well, I know one of them has to be negative, right? 
Um, it's, it's still three and 16, but what's a sign? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then what I'm gonna tell you next is this, because it's the trinomial, your results should be two binomials multiplied together. So you're gonna have two set of parentheses and you're gonna have X here and X here. Why? Because X, you always have X and X there because X times X is X squared. Your job is to find this constant, right here. Yeah. Positive three, so plus three, minus 16, done. That's called guess and check, right? Which one you like better? It, it allows you to skip that middle, middle step. Um, once you find the once you find the two number, all you do is just build up the parentheses. That's all. X is X is always there in the two set of parentheses. All right, you guys do D. I'm gonna walk around see how you do. Again, product forty eight some negative sixteen. I don't think it's three negative sixteen anymore. It's some different. And then you can use guess and check. What do you have? Yeah, that's it. You're done. X minus four, X minus four, right? Um, so negative. 12, negative four, that's two numbers. And all you do is just fill in the parenthesis. X and X is already there. It should be there, X times X, X squared. Um, minus 12, minus four now. A lot of people don't like AC methods because I can check Mimi, I can check. If something wrong, I can always backtrack, back right? Um, how do I check this? How is that? So let's see, X times X is X squared. X times negative four is negative four x. So let me write out. Don't, don't write. You don't have to write this down. Um, so x squared check. I'm just gonna do like that underline, double line, so I know that I checked it. Uh, the next one I want to check negative sixteen x. So um, x times negative four is negative four x. What? And then what? Negative 12 X, a negative 12 times X is negative 12 X. So that negative 16 X, right? If you add them together, right? So yes, check. And then last, remember FOIL, F-O-I-L, last, right? Negative 12 times negative four is positive 48. So check, you can always FOIL it back. But you like AC method? I like AC methods because next next lecture, AC method is your best friend. Yes, and check is a pain in the butt. Um, I still show you both, which is, Okay, just blue, so you know. Okay, um, you try. Ready? X squared plus five x plus six. You can you either get some check or AC method.
Uh, oh, oh, sorry. I don't see that you try. Um, hang on, hang on. <clears throat> Give me a second. Thank you. Thank you, Kyla. <coughs> oh, okay. Hi. I hide it from you. Um. Okay, refresh your Moodle. You see it now. Sorry. Thank you, Bob. Sorry about that. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. It's lagging, sorry. Come on. Refresh it. Just guess on there. Refresh it. Let me go back here. Is there? Is there? Today is the thirtieth, right? Yeah. Is there? Do you guys see it? Yeah. Like refresh your model. You gotta refresh it. All right, um, not too bad. Find the factor of 18. So what are the two numbers? Multiply 18, that's what they're asking. So let's, mm -hmm, three, six. Um, for me, you know what, it, it, three, six is good. For me, when I think of even number, I remind me, I start with two, I always do, right? So two and nine, let's say two times nine. What else? Uh, Elaine, to say three and six, three and six. What else? Is that it? How about one and 18? Right, one and 18. Is it possible to factor x squared plus four x plus 18? Is it, is it possible? Now, so in order to answer this question, you're gonna say, can I find two numbers, multiply 18 and add to four? Well, these are the two pairs of the multiply to 18. I'm not going to add it to four. I'm not going to add it to four. I'm not going to add it to four. So no, right? It's not possible because I find the product where I cannot find the sum, right? Um, so you say, um, how do I say? Uh, I can't not find. two factors of 18 that add, add up to four. Well, so you say it's not factorable, right? Now in um, factorable, um, we have another term for say not factorable. And you know this term is called prime. Remember when prime number? Why is it called prime? Because you cannot factor prime, right? If I told you it's 10, you can say, okay, Mimi, 10 is two times five. But if I tell you seven, 
can't, right? You can't factor seven. There's no two number multiply give you seven. Of course, one times seven is seven, but one is not prime, so we're not consider one. Um, so we, if, if not factorable, you're gonna say prime. Is an important one from. So for this problem, x squared plus four x plus eighteen, all you tell me is prime. That's all you have to tell me. No need explanation. Of course, you do that in your head. Um, if a trinomial cannot be factored, um, it is classified as prime. Mm, so that's right there. Same thing. I just said it. It's prime. All right, um, so now how do I know which one is factorable, which one is not uh, without, you know, doing the, the AP method thing, without doing the product itself, right? So the next step, how you, the test for you to, to be able to tell which problem is be able to factor and which problem is not. So the test here is that if the trinomial x squared plus bx plus c can be factored, if b squared minus 4c is a perfect square, so that's the mean. Um, but by the way, do you guys recognize this? It's not going to be in your exam, but I'm just wondering for those from just fresh out of high school. Do so you guys rec recognize that one? It's part of what formula? B squared minus 4 you see? <laughs> it's part of a, a formula. Start with Q. Yeah, quadratic formula. And yeah, and then they have, they have song about that formula too. I don't know any songs, so I'm not singing it for you, but yeah, it's um it's part of the quadratic formula. Don't write this down. Minus b plus or minus so square root of b squared. Don't write this down. It's it's not. It's never be going to be your exam. And that right there, that's right there, is called the determinant. Um, it's very important. You're gonna see this again if you go high in math. Which they always come back to this, even grad school, right? That b squared minus 4ac. Um, so it's factorable if b squared minus 4ac is a perfect square. What does that mean? That means when I plug in b and a and c for inside, inside the, under the root here, it should be something like something I can take a square root, like 9, 100, right? 25, things like that. Uh, so it's called perfect square. So let me. Let's write for A, C. Okay, let's do this. Um, B squared minus four A, C. Can, uh, let, let's list it out. What is A, this problem, what is A? A, uh, four A. A is one, right? B is two and C is negative one. Well, that's a right there. We don't. We never really put a there because it's always one. C is negative one, and then you plug it in, and then you plug it in. Um, b squared minus four ac. So something squared minus four times something times something, and we we list that out right there. B is two. Just put two in the front c right there. A is one. C is negative one. Don't mess this up. <laughs> This is a matter of arithmetic. Two squared is four. A minus four times negative one is positive four. So four plus four is six. Uh -huh. I'm sorry, four plus, no. Yeah, four plus four is, is eight. Is eight. <clears throat> is eight. Is eight a perfect square? Can you find two number when you square give you eight? Well, see, two square is four. That's it, right? Four square is 16, so we skip eight, right? Um, so you cannot find two number when you square is is eight, so um, so no solution is prime. Remember what we say, say, it's only be able to factor if it's a perfect square, and it is not, right? Run out of space here. Um, just say not a perfect square. Um, I'm gonna not a perfect square. Um, 
I'm going to write some here, right here since I can't find a number that when I square it, give me eight. Not a perfect square. Six is a perfect square because you can find numbers, squares. Square 16, 25, 36, 49, 1. Okay. So you gotta do B, tell me what you think. Oh, um, you're gonna give your answer too. So what do you say? You cannot factor, what do you say? Prem, right, prem. On your homework, it's not factor, you say prem. That's a final answer. Do you gotta do B? Tell me what you got. I'm going to use blue. So use. Uh, a is negative 19. B, uh, a, I'm sorry, B is negative 19. A is 1. C is negative 120. You're going to use calculator for this one. Can someone tell me what you got? 29. Really? 29? It's supposed to be factorable. 19, um, by the way, when you do negative 19 parentheses square, it's different than 19 square without the parentheses. So maybe just do 19 square because it's gonna be positive anyway. Forget about that negative thing. Um, yeah, just do 19 square, it's the same thing. To put privacy, you have a different answer. So 19 square plus, right? Plus four times 120. So minus minus is plus. Oh, oh, you are good. And then you square root it, you're gonna take a square root. Instead of finding two numbers, to, instead of finding two numbers, to, okay, what are the two numbers? What are the numbers I have squared? It's hard, right? It's square root it is the inverse of square, right? So square root it. And you have an integer or you have a, if you have an integer, that means it's a perfect square, right? If you try to square root number eight, you can have a irrational. Three point something maybe, something like that. Um, so yes, it's integer. So yes, you can factor it. So um, so your answer will be say factorable. And I'm not gonna factor it because it doesn't ask me to. All right. Um, number five can is it factorable or no? Um, I, I don't feel like, I don't, I don't like trying this, it's too long. For this method, like the testing, by the way, it's not part of your factor. It's not part of your factor process, okay? It's just checking, is it factorable or not, right? And personally, I don't like it too long, too, too, too long. I rather just say, okay, what is the two number product is negative 12, sum is four, that's all, right? If I cannot find two number, I'm done. Uh, but if you're really stuck, then try the formula, okay? 
right. So let's do this. Is it factorable? Can I find the product? Can I find the product is negative 12 and then the sum is four? Oh, my nose. I'm not sick, it's been like this for months. Um, negative 12 and four, uh, so product is negative 12, sum is four, so basically six and two, right? The combination of six and two. I'm gonna write down six and two first, and then I need to add the side. Negative two because you need the sums to be positive. And then, um, do you guys want me to show you AC method or guess and check? A AC method. Okay, AC. All right. So that means I'm going to rewrite this. It's x squared plus 6x minus 2x minus 12. And because AC method, you're gonna group this. The first one, the first group, I can factor out the X. X plus six. Second group, I can factor out the two. When you factor out a negative, what happened? It changed its size, right? <laughs> so X plus six. What I meant by change its size is a negative become positive. Negative for X is X plus six times X minus two. Should I factor out B or should I do some some first? Mm -hmm. Right in descending order. Um, so X squared plus 12 X minus 160. So you gotta try to do that, factor that. Well, that's the first one. That's 4A. 4B is factorable. Yes, I said factorable. Yeah, I just said I don't have enough space, so I kind of go over it. Um, the red one is for 4A, I'm sorry. It's, and it's pram. 4A, 4B, however, it is factorable. And then you can factor it if you want. Hmm. Yeah. Someone I haven't talked yet, you want to volunteer? What's the product? Uh, product is 968 and the sum is 12 and, oh, that's 12, yeah, sorry. Um, <laughs> I was getting ahead of myself. And then the two numbers? 
Very good, negative 28. Mm -hmm. I think that's the harder part, that's it. Um, and then x squared, then you split that 12x into negative 20x plus 8x minus 160. Group factoring. Um, first one, I can factor out x. So x minus 20. Second one, factor out a. X minus 20 again. A times negative 20 is negative 160. So x minus 20 times x plus a. Do you have any questions? I'm gonna do get some check for, for six and six A and B. Um, factor the trinomials below, begin by factor out the GCF first. So this is one of the problem. Um, you guys, you, you was my in workshop last time, what I did, I give you a GCF. A lot of people just kind of didn't see that. Um, so between five, 40 and 45, what should I factor out? Five, right? Now, uh, first of all, it has to be in descending order and it is, right? So I can skip that step. Next step would be GCF. So what's left? X squared, negative 40 divided by five is negative eight, so a data pay X. Negative 45 divided by five is negative nine. And then you wanna find the product. I'm just gonna say P to be negative nine and then sum to be negative eight. What are the two number? Well, product is nine, sum is eight, so one and nine, right? So one and nine, but then what is my sign? Sum needs to be negative eight, so negative, which one? Mm, I need part negative sum. So, because when I add the two, when I just have to put negative eight. It should be negative nine, right? Yeah. All right, um, and then that's it. And then, and then uh, oh, by the way, I'm doing this one right here. Oops. All right, I just kind of ignore the five for now. So that will be plus one and minus nine, right? <coughs> you got subject. You can always check it back by foil it. And don't forget to bring down the five. Is there any question? It's a good time to ask. Okay. Um, 6B between negative two, or again, it's in descending order. So, yes, it's checked. Um, what should I factor out for the GCF? Hmm? Very good. Negative two, right? You're going to fac factor out the negative as well, especially when you have a negative for the for x squared, right? So, negative two. So me or so. Oh, you. I thought somebody outside. Um, negative two, and then what's left? Minus twenty. Oh no, not twenty. Ten. And then, yeah, plus twenty-five, right? Mm -hmm. And then what's the next step? Yeah, yeah, the, for the negative two, ignore it for now. That's the last step, you bring it down. Product is one, um, it's 20 to 25. Sum is negative 10. 
Um, give me the two numbers. It's product first. So think of two number multiply 25. Well, not one in 25. Mm -hmm. Yeah, negative five and negative five. Very good. Um, then you're done, right? Negative five, negative five there. X and X, and then bring down the negative two. Um, for me, well, I do a guess and check a lot. And it's not the same thing, especially when you hide math. Guess and check is very handy. For this, for this particular um, objective, when you have a coefficient of one, when, when I talk about coefficient of one, being what the number in front of x squared, right? it's very handy, and, and I like it. I like it. I prefer this over AC method. But when it when I have something in front of x squared, then I guess the check is the change. But um, it, it's, it have many many combination. If you're good with number, go for it. If you're not good, like most. I see because you got a beginner. Um, then I prefer, prefer you, you use AC method. Okay. All right, you try to two x squared plus sixteen x plus thirty. <clears throat> when you're done, this is what we're going to do. We don't have, uh, you try three. Um, so when you're done with you try two, I want you to work on number seven and number eight. And I want you to talk to your friends, right? Get into group if you want to. Um, I'm gonna go around and check. If you finished number seven and number eight, you can leave. Actually, just numbers. Um, before you do that, I need to talk about number eight, eight, seven, B, and then you can do the rest. Let me do um, let me do one of them first. Well, once you're done, though, you try. You gotta show me your work though before you leave. Don't just leave, okay? Um. <clears throat> Oh, such that. A T, such that. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm going to do number seven. You got to do number eight. Um, all right. So let's do, let's, let's do number seven quick, and then you guys can do number eight. Show me your work. Talk to your friend if you want to, and then you can leave. Okay, number eight. Can someone tell me a two number product is 10 and sum is seven? Five and two. And then all I have to do is what? Fill it in, right? So X and X, 
So plus five and plus two, and then I'm done. Now, for part B, what is different between part B and part A? Yeah, there are two variables. <laughs> right, what do I do first? First of all, um, alphabetically, it is in um, descending order, right? A first. So A squared, A to the first, A to the zero, which is one, because there's no A there. Um, what I want to do is ignore the B for now. It's like it's not there at all. Now you have a squared plus seven, a plus 10. You have it over here, right? You have it over here. So all you do is just copy it over, leave a little state space uh, behind five and two. And then just copy it over here, nothing. And once you've done that, once you've done factor, once you've done factor a squared plus seven, a plus 10, now you, open up your, your B part, and all you do is just fill out the B next to the, the constant. And then you're done. So that's a little trick. Um, how do I know that I got it right? I'm gonna check. So let's check. X time X is X squared. X time 2b is what? 2, 2x, 2bx, let's do 2. Oh, I'm sorry, it's not x, it's a, my bad. I have it, sorry. Um, I keep saying, it's a, sorry. Over here is a as well. well nobody say anything. Okay. <laughs> it's just, it's just a letter, it's just a change. Um, it's annoying. Um, all right, 2ab, right, 2ab. Inner 5b times a is 5ab. And last, 5b times 2b is 10b squared. What do, I, what do I do with the middle terms? <laughs> yes, you, 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 you combine them together, right? Um, I'm running out of color here. So the two that is the same, you combine them. So we write x squared, two, Two plus five is seven AB plus ten B squared. Done. Let's check. Let's check. L let me highlight your answer. Okay, your job is to do number part A, 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 and A B. It's very much the same seven A and seven B. Um, talk to your friends, get mingled. I'll walk around. If you gotta write, you can leave. <clears throat> I 
What number is it? What it's number? Number of B. Oh, okay. Five. It should be positive 20. Thank you. Right, shouldn't it be like positive 20? Yeah, positive 20. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. Thank you. I'll just say I was like. Yeah, please. something wrong, let me know because yeah. I make mistake too. Um, you got it? Have a good weekend. You too. See you later. Minus eight plus twenty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah.